here on the mic with Derek Chain here in the Origins Parkour facility in Vancouver, Canada. We're so excited to have you guys here. We have an amazing event lined up. Fantastic. I'm really psyched for what's about to happen. We're starting a hot off with the skills event. We're going to see that soon. We're going to see some big jumps for sure. Yeah, today's stride mission and double barrier challenge are two very different but very exciting challenges. You know, I think one of the things we saw in the qualifiers yesterday was how much it forced these athletes to have different types of skills. You know, you see someone like Joey Adrian, he's walking around three foot seven, barely able to stand up next to someone like Mish Todorovic, but able to still compete in this amazing challenge. And there's a level of strategy involved in this that you don't really see in parkour events. Wrap it up. <laughs> We're going to be starting soon, so you guys stay tuned. It's going to be hot. All right, athletes starting to make their way up to the beginning of the stride mission. In this challenge, athletes are going to be tested on how efficiently they can make their way from point A to point B. Really, it's all about points of contact. Yep, they're trying to keep as few points of contact in this course as possible. The judges will be counting. So the less steps they take, the higher potential score they have. After that, everything is about difficulty and execution. And those are the two main qualifications here on both of the, the uh, skill challenges. Yep, yeah, that's how they're going to be scored on difficulty as well as execution. On difficulty, you may see somebody going for a harder stride, and they'll also be uh, they'll also be scored on, on execution for how well they're able to pull it off on body position. Oh, whoa, we're looking at Camila Brokaw right now, yeah. and he's starting off. Precision on the rail, one bound on the box. Good plow. Just manages to make the low 9-6 oh tower and makes the cap. Just unable to make it to that crane or precision. Yeah. That would give him a lot more points. I think it's because he stalled on that Miller middle platform. That's one of the hardest points. So we're looking at this transition off the big running platform onto that higher tower. Gareth Norvell, our youngest competitor at 18, coming all the way from, from Team Rilla Hops in Orlando, Florida. Let's see how he does here. Dropping down to a nice free. Excellent stride. Oh, he just manages the night. Ah, and it gets that foot up on the tower, but he hasn't quite made that crane. I did like that stride on the main platform, though. Yeah, getting caught up a little bit on that final jump, it's a really tough transition to make that, that height. All right, twice last the year's dark horse. Everyone's really excited to see Joe Adrian. He does not have the height advantage of some of these other athletes, but you're definitely going to see something fresh. Tons of power, very explosive. Works really well in the freestyle event. Let's see how he does here in the skills. Low step down before he does the rail precision. Does a little run. Moving his feet really oh, fast. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing run from Joey. Let's try. All right. Looks like Dante Grazioli. Oh. All right. Dante giving the thumbs up. Dante, known for having one of the biggest standing rail positions Ooh. in parkour right now. I'm seeing some big strides, and he's oh, all right. Great stride sure up. Have made it. I know he wants to get that, that crew right at the end. His stride up was really clean, though, generated a lot of power. You can see how he got his chest back on top of his weight, really able to push through. But I think he just wasn't ready to commit to it. Yeah, yeah. but he had a pretty decent hip position on that, so. Either way, you should be pretty happy. Very clean run. All right, I'm really excited Darryl's to see Daryl. Uh, uh oh. 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 Gets the good. A little stumble on that first strut right before. Daryl, a newcomer, uh, he's one of the head coaches at the Tennis Free Running Academy in LA. But he's a newcomer to competition, hasn't had a lot of time on it. Jared Davis, however, has competed for the last few years. Representing Vancouver, Canada. Stride down Let's see how edge. he does. Super really long concentrating long. on those uh, low Ooh. points of contact. Yeah. Just barely pulls that crane through, but keeps his hands up, which is going to help keep that uh, execution score up. But I noticed he slipped up on the, that step up to the middle platform. Things to keep in mind, though, we are not timing this run while we are looking flow for execution. They are allowed to pause if they think they can generate the power. This is, again, one of those strategy bits for each athlete. All right, Ken Johns up to the plate. Are you ready? He's representing uh, Unparalleled Movement right now from Montana. Oh, lots of power. Yes. 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 
full of confidence. This is right in his wheelhouse. This is the kind of stuff he's training at his own gym in Montana. Um, but now, we're getting into the heavy favorites for this event. Looks like uh, Dante Onish is going to be up next. Dante Grazioli should be next. Dante Grazioli should be next. Oh, sorry. Mish should be next, yeah. It's not my <laughs> So, Mish stepping up to play. A heavy favorite to win. Came out on top last year in the skills challenge. But everybody knows it's all about Dylan no. and Mish in this. Here we go. Big power. The largest jump. Making a point. I think that one of the biggest things in this competition that you understand is you've got to display control. People have to see it. So some athletes are looking to cover up mistakes. Some people like Mish are using that as an opportunity to show just how much they are above the rest of this competition. Here's classic yeah. Dylan. Oh, lots of power. Oh, doesn't get it up. I get what he wants. Looking back at the video, you're going to be able to see how low his chest was coming in off that platform. He just didn't have that, that so power that Mish had coming off of it. You can see the control, though, so that will come up, but they may dock that execution very, very good. I know Dylan didn't get what he wanted, but this is going to look good. So, each of these athletes will be getting two more attempts, and they're going to be taking the best score that they've achieved for this event. This facility, brand new stations all on the side. You can see these towers just added in. A ton of new stuff built out just before the competition. So really no athlete here has had the opportunity to train all over this course. It's gonna be really exciting to see how they use it for the stuff. We saw a little bit of it in the qualifiers. A lot of these athletes just getting used to this brand new space though. And you're definitely gonna see them traverse in the uh, later speed courses when they come through the more dense area here in front of us. I think for a lot of these athletes, you know, there's a, a lot of different skills being presented here. People are having to choose where they want to display their skills. Some athletes, uh, like Mish, for instance, who's only going to be competing in skill and speed today, opting to go on a style, an event where he could definitely have placed, but he felt like he really wanted to save himself for this, this skill challenges and speed. Especially with skills, it's actually twice the amount of events because you have to do two. They're just a little shorter. And the speed, that's three runs. Each of these is definitely super time consuming. They're very high energy, lots of explosive power required. That's another element of the NAPC becoming its own sort of new thing is that athletes have to look forward to how they're going to strategize their points, how they're going to become winners. And this is something that's really interesting to come as the competition grows. Yeah, you know, I can definitely see strategy starting to play in a lot more. You know, uh, even athletes like Jesse LaFlair, who came in fourth last year at the Skills Challenge, choosing to opt out so that he can focus on speed and style. And, and you know, I think it's a smart choice. These guys are, are trying to perform at the top level of their sport, at their 100% their of their skill level. They really can't afford to be wasting energy on something if they don't feel like it's going to be a valuable use of their time. I also think it's really interesting, just from speaking about Jesse LeClaire, I was talking to him the other day and he said that, hey, he's gotten this sort of uh, Red Bull tricking reputation on YouTube and all that. But he really did appreciate it. He was like, hey, I started out doing parkour. Like, I want to do it for this course. I want to do speed. I want to do, like, skill stuff. Like, and that's something I think will be interesting. And I look forward to seeing Jesse perform in speed as well. Absolutely. I think you're 100% right. These athletes all have different backgrounds. They have different styles, different strong points. And um, with competitions like this, it's great to be able to see those athletes have the right venue to show off those skills and, and really have something that demonstrates a, the sort of huge variety of skills that are going on in this sport right now. So we got some live scores going up. Alright, Joey coming in seventh.
Kent coming in fifth place. All right, here's your top four right here. Daryl Stingley coming in fourth. No surprise there, and Mish coming out on top. Now, on their next run, they're gonna be moving into doing uh, another round. I'm really interested to see how consistent these athletes can be, especially as they have varied skill challenges. And again, how the scores add up. It may not be down to just the athlete performing a certain way. You have to beat the judges. You have to convince them that you know what you're doing. And that um, attempt, uh, the points are going to add up and see how they add up in your favor. So another element. Absolutely. I love the way this, this course is set up. It, it doesn't just challenge how big you can go, how far you can go. It takes skill to make that curve, which you may not be able to see from the, the angle of the screen. You actually have to make a really hard turn and then elevate. So you're dealing with all these different forces push you in different ways. You're going on really tiny surfaces and you have to be precise. Even on the bigger boxes, foot placement, body position, it's all key. It's and all the key. judges will be watching for that things like like what you said, body positioning and hip position. Composure as well. You can see on an athlete when he does something like that. I just know how to watch for that. We have a great judging staff here representing three different gyms, three different styles of people, but, but all, all people who have seen this sport for a long time who know what that good movement looks like. They can tell when an athlete is, is trying to cover something up. They can tell what that control is like. And uh, you know, it's, it's a really unique style of judging, very similar to gymnastics vault or a ski jump. Exactly, except they're gonna be looking for things a little less than, you know what I mean, because they're not gonna be like pointing your feet. They're just looking for what good movement so they want to know if you're in control. And that the other element of scoring is you may be going for something a little bit less difficult, but if you are going for the perfect execution, judges again will recognize that, and that will reflect on your score, and you'll be able to pay off on that end. Absolutely. With having this score be out of 200 points, difficulty is worth 100, execution is worth 100. That way, if you do something easier, you can still make up those points by getting that really good execution. And that's something that we encourage in this sport, and it's great to see reflected in this competition. Because it looks a little bit closer to what you get in the jam anyway. It's like, hey, you're going to see a guy do a big thing. He might be a little bit wonky on the execution, but you're always going to give props to the guy who's like, he does everything flawlessly. He's going to do everything clean. Everything's going to be scaled forward now. But at the end of the day, that's why you see a run like Misha's getting scored so highly because not only was it the highest level of difficulty, it was beautifully executed. A little bit of show off at the end for the crowd as well just really helps. Right, you can see the guys just warming up for the next round, getting themselves in place, testing out their, their foot placement. You know, these guys have only had a couple of tries to practice this out in the qualifiers. There's a short amount of warm up time. But they have not had a ton of time on this, this this specific stride course, and it hasn't been left out for them to train in the interim. And that just shows the level of athlete that's going on. Minimal number of attempts. This is something they can defeat, no problem. Absolutely. It was just two days ago. They saw this for the first time. They exactly. were able to try it, and uh, now they're taking it to a whole other level. I can already see a huge difference from where this, the skill level was at in the qualifiers versus now here in the finals. The amount of confidence and composure that you see here, it's just so entertaining. You can see guys that know what they're doing. You're not here watching kids on the street just like all over themselves. And this is something I look forward to. And the sport grow into the mainstream showing these guys are pro athletes. These guys take this seriously. They put hours into this. Absolutely. Just because this is a new sport does not mean these guys are not training at a professional level. All right, let's see what Camilo has to do here. Camilo, are you ready? It's going to take a lot more power for this to level up his score. Dropping okay. down, clean pre. Bounds a little more controlled now, it seems. And oh, rolls it over with that mobility. Yeah. That really helps. It looked like, like he just rolled all the way over on the side of his He ankle. did. He, he really did. But he was in control. I think he's got strong ankles on that. All right, Gareth stepping up. Let's see if he can change that out. He just barely made the crane on that last jump. Getting himself psyched up and ready to go. All right, are you ready? All right, ready, start. All right, here goes Gareth, dropping down, 
Clean three, striding out. Charging through. Nice. Just, just hits that. Oh, yeah. He nails his game back. He's going to be happy about that. Still slowing up down a lot on the tower, but very clean overall. Making uh, that was able to power through on that, yeah. Yeah. His placement was really good. The only thing I think that's going to hurt him is that he basically had to stop for that free to stick it on the edge because he just failed to pull it through. Impressive that he was able to generate that amount of power while he was able to stop it. It's yeah. just sort of... Regenerating oh. that power is really tough. Someone who's excellent at that, though, Joey Adrian. I feel like this guy can go 0 to 90 in under a second. Give him the thumbs up. Here he goes. Dropping down. Free to the rail. Oh, he's going for that same leg run. <laughs> Super clean run from Joe. You can tell he's happy about that one. I would be too. How tall is this guy? Is he like five? Uh, I think he's about two seven. <laughs> Just the fact that he's able to accomplish this course is like, I think people should really recognize that. Once again, a refresher on how this is scored. They're looking for minimal number of foot contacts from this point where they're standing all the way to the tower at the end. And they're judging them on difficulty and execution. It's all about keeping that momentum going. If you can take a uh, landing with one step instead of two, show how much more control you have. And again, the choice to take a stride instead of a bound with two feet. There we go. Very, very clean run from Jared Davis. You can see how well he uses momentum, generating a ton of power, driving the knee up, getting himself in place. So clean on that landing. He's definitely going to get a better score than his last one. All right, here's Daryl. Like I said, a newcomer. Um, He's been uh, training with me a lot in Los Angeles. It's been really exciting to see him develop as an athlete. And, uh, you know, I think all the training he's been doing in the gym has been around a lot of really talented athletes pushing for more power. He's got huge jumps. Just leaning forward on that one. That's a long stride. A long stride. Oh. Oh. The calculation, I think his strides are just a little too long, so he wasn't able to get that height that he needed later on the tower. Fortunately, they'll be taking the best score out of the three attempts, so he's got one more shot to blow everyone away. A lot of these athletes were using one of the, or their first or second runs as a trial just to try and go for something safe, get something solid on the boards. And that gives them the opportunity to really blow it out of the water at the end. Looked like Daryl was trying to do something different. Bigger. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to do something a little braver, but didn't quite make it. He's just already giving him tips on how to load his quads. Can't do that there drop down oh, slide. A quick gallop Ooh, on there. Very high ah! flow. Very, very clean train. He doesn't look happy about it, but I still think it was a better run overall than his first one. Yeah, I think he wanted something shake, more. Yeah. I can tell he took extra steps on the tower in the middle. That's going to lower his, his overall difficulty, but his execution is definitely really high. So again, to clarify for everyone out there, two foot landings on the technicality level easier than a stride with a single leg. And that's what they're looking for here. Ooh, he takes that drop down, down to the drop rail. Down. And he's just oh, getting it. Oh, 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 dropping down to the drop three on the rail, carrying it through. Super clean run across the tower and sticks the free effortlessly. That'll put him up a few rankings. He is really excited about I that really run. I think the judges should be impressed by that one. Mish gonna show up again. See if he can get a little bit closer to a perfect score. I think he wants that single leg again, but without the little extra skip. Because he's overshooting is how much power he has. He didn't even stick that leg in the single. There here we go. It's the drop down three. Oh, doesn't get the step he wants. He's not even gonna take it. Giving up the run. Right Dude. away, he had a bad landing coming off of that rail three and messed up his turnaround on the box. Like I said, that change in direction, that pivot, takes a lot of your power. And if you don't hit your steps right, it's gonna be really difficult to make it. I can tell he wasn't happy with that run. He already has still probably the highest score from that first one. He's gonna keep it, try to really blow it out of the water on the third one. And again, just because they're using so few moves, it seems like something that's really easy, but you're constantly having to think three steps ahead. Huge! Confident ending on that 
precision. Absolutely. Perfect for position. Power and confidence. That's the kind of blood we like to see on these stride missions. Calling it as we see it here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard, hard to, to hold back, back when you, you see, see something, something exciting out here. Count, Count to five, five, Frosty. How about that? One Mississippi. We're waiting for the results on that second round. We're getting ranks again. So tied for eighth place, Camilo Brokaw and Garrett Norvell. Seventh place, Joey Adrian with 150 points. It's just the steps in it's too many right now. Sixth place followed by Jared Davis, 155 points. Daryl Stingley, oh sorry. And John's 156.7 in fifth place. Daryl Stingley in fourth, 161.7 points. Dante Grazioli with 181.7 points in third place. Sneaking ahead of Mish Todorovic in second with 186.7% points. Yeah. Oh, there's so much good power. 
Just not able to get what he needs on that center tower. That's a really tough transition, trying to generate that power from a short run-up. And again, you have to get it again right after that immediate. There's an incredible amount of focus that's required on this because you may just be thinking about how you nailed that last run, but you have a couple more steps coming up. And you need to think about changing your body position completely just to make that turn. Kate John stepping up right now. And start! Stride into the three. Look at those yeah. nice high arms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Power on those jumps to side stand. Okay. You can tell he wanted that three. He's right up there. His crane was so close, just couldn't quite commit to it. I think his chest was a little far back to really go for it. Okay. Let's see what Dante does here. I'm sure he'll be happy with that third place. Moving past Misha is going to be really tough. I know Misha's looking on the this score after this. Let's see what uh, decision Dante makes here. And start! Again, those are the points that are going to help him uh, move along in the next double barrier challenge. Those are points that he's going to lose. He's just sitting out there. Looks like Bree. All right, Mish. Step he really wants set. this one. Straight to the rail pursuit. Mish, you can see the grimace. <laughs> This might have to come down to the double barrier. 